Now, I would like to discuss a little bit more the floor surface. And we have a look at this part here, it's uh, part number 11. What you see here is uh, actually a, a surface, or uh, multiple surfaces, so it's not a solid model. Um, it's just a bunch of surfaces, so I can um, single select them. And let's say, so this is the part we would like to rough, and um, this is the stock definition. So it's just again a, a cube, and um, we need to rough out all the material. Now, the, we know that the system will perform fine and will rough out all the material. However, we have to have a closer look at the uh, drive surface here. Now, you can see that um, this part actually has a few floor surfaces. Now, we said, okay, you gotta pick the floor surface, and according to the floor surface, we're going to machine the whole the area. Now, if you look at, for example, part number three, where is it? It's here. The area to be machined is clearly defined because it's just the area above the floor surface here. So there's the floor surface and the area in between the walls is exactly um, above the floor surface. So we can say that um, we can machine all the material, we can wrap all the material because it's, um, the floor surface covers all the area which we like to machine. Now in this case it's different, right? So if you consider this to be the floor surface, so this surface here, um, and let's hide this and bring this back again, we see that um, the stock material is not only above just the floor surface, it's also above, you know, this surface here and this surface here. Now the system doesn't accept to have multiple selections in the floor surface. You can only pick one floor surface, and this floor surface um, is being used to create the cuts, and it's the cuts are just being created um, above the floor surface. So, what does it mean for this situation here? It simply means that we have to uh, make sure that the floor surface is covering all the area. And um, what I have done here is exactly um, doing this. So if we have a look at the floor surface, which is this one here, you see that it's not only this surface here between the two walls, it's actually going all the way through the part. So in order to machine or to rough the part completely, you have to make sure that the floor surface is covering all the area you would like to machine. It's very essential for the two-pass calculation that you um, always bear this in mind. Um, so as you have complex shapes here um, on top of your part or somewhere in your part, you got to make sure that the part, the, the floor surface always is underneath every area you would like to machine, basically everywhere where the stock is. Okay, let's give it a try. Let's take this operation here and uh, copy it, let's say, what is it, part number 11. Part number 11, it's also the floor, which is fine. And let's uh, make the changes to the, um, to the settings. So the floor surface now is this surface here, covering all the area. Okay, the wall surface is, as usual, all the part. Um, we don't make any changes to the settings. Um, just go to the stock definition and reselect our stock. Hide this, bring up this, select this. Okay, okay. That's it. And then we start the calculation. And meanwhile, I will uh, define the stock for the cutting simulation. It's this one here, apply close, hide it again and bring up part number 11 again and let's wait for the calculation to be finished. Okay, now you can see that um, the two paths is not only be on top of this 
floor surface of course because we selected the whole um, floor here which is this surface here so a toolpath is being created everywhere and uh, also uh, compensated to the to the stock so let's hide everything and um, bring up the verification and let's see what the, t the result looks like Okay, so this is the result. Um, once again, 